a little bit of VE stuff, I guess. We're working on Shay's truck, um, a 90, well, the engine is actually an 89, but we've done a bunch of changing. So we're just gonna say VE um, Cummins 6BTs. Your timing idea will be exactly the same. So I'm gonna show you how to set the timing. Um, I've had this question a few times and there isn't really good information on looking it up. So I'm gonna show you how to set the timing if you don't know what you, what you got going on. So if nothing has been changed, I, I shouldn't say that. If you haven't changed anything, haven't taken anything apart, what I recommend is marking stuff. So if you look at this pump gear, you'll see there's some letters in the pump gear here. And then there's a mark right here. If you mark this and this, that will always give you an insignia of where this is. Now, 99% of VEs will always be on the E. Now, some will be on C, but I can't tell you because I've had a bunch of these things apart over the years. Some of, I know lots of guys said that the, the C was for the non-intercooled, but I've seen non-intercooled on C and E. I honestly don't know for sure. There's some literature that I have read that C is for the non-intercooled and E is for the intercooled. And the reasoning for that, in my opinion anyway, was the piston bowl design difference. The 155 tends to like more timing than the non-intercooled um, in factory form. Or that's where they want to run it. I shouldn't say that it likes it there. That's where it wants to run it. Or why they want you to run it. Anyways, we won't get into that argument today. But, if so if you're putting on one of these pumps and you've never had one apart before, pretty easy. What you want to do is put your engine to top dead center and well, if you have the front case off, it's really easy to tell top dead center because this pin will be facing up. Your two, your two marks right here on the front of the crankshaft and the injection pump gear will be lined up. Now, if you don't have the cover off, what you can do is, well, the pin's not there, but this pin right here, where that hole is, if you look where my index finger is. Oh, hold on, let me get something to point at it. This right here, there's a pin inside that. Oh, there we go. There's a pin that goes inside there, and it goes in, into a uh, into the in, um, cam gear. Sorry, brain fart there. Uh, goes into the cam gear, and that tells you you're at top dead center. So what you do is just roll the motor over. I personally pull the pin out, um, and then you just take a uh, either a camera if you have a camera to get in there, or you use a um, mirror, and you can just shine it in there. See when it's in the right spot. Slide the pin in and out. Make sure it's good. That tells you top dead center on the engine. That's probably the easiest way to tell top dead center if you don't have the front off. Now, if you're putting an injection pump in the truck, myself personally, I like to check out a few other things, maybe put a front seal in it, completely up to you. If you do have these front off and you're doing it, you wanna make sure that you have something to stop the killer dowel pin coming out. We just have this one peened over and the um, actual pin, we've staked the pin so the pin's not going anywhere. Uh, but I like the bolts that you can see um, I like to make sure that they're tight because if this bolt falls out, it's the same problem as with the killer dial pin. It goes down in there and munches a bunch of stuff up and breaks stuff and it's not good. So make sure you do that. Now, you got the engine at top dead center. If the thing has never been touched, if you look right here on the side of the pump, just make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about here. See there's a line right here into the case and then there's also a line right here. If you have those two marks lined up, that's gonna be the stock timing. Now, if the pump was just rebuilt, you wanna make sure that you pull this pin out, and that is actually gonna pin the pump at the stock timing. I find that's most of the time, this pin here is gonna be a problem for that because it's not always in the right spot. Like the pump isn't always gonna be in just in the perfect spot. So I personally just pull these out, flip it around. So usually when you get it back, this plate here will just be hanging off a wire on here usually. And you pull this out, put that plate in, put it back together. Myself personally, I don't, I, I just pull those out right away. So if you have this line, this mark lined up here, and if you come on this side, if you look at the keyway, so this one's not lined up perfect here. I'm gonna have to turn it. But see, there's another little line right here. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little line right there. Your keyway wants to line up with that. So if I just have to take this and flip it one, I'll be able, no, I can't do it with my hand, but. You want to just move it over so let's move it over so 
when you're adjusting the timing on these, sometimes you'll fight you. Something that I am going to, I'm probably gonna make up a couple and probably list them up on the website here in the next little while. Something that, I used to have one that I made, but I think I sold it to somebody. But basically it's, it's um, a tool to hold the shaft on the pump and it's got a set screw with a ball in it so it doesn't screw anything up. And then you can turn it, get it exactly where you want it. And you can then get um, it back off and the pump doesn't move. Now, if the pump is pinned where it's supposed to be, you can maneuver it around. It just depends. I don't know. Sometimes you fight with them. Sometimes they go right on. If, if you're just taking a pump off and putting a pump back on, you're not changing the time or any of that. If you put everything top dead center with the pump pinned, it'll just drop right in there. And if it doesn't fit just perfect, what I do myself personally is you just roll the motor over a little until it slides right in. Sometimes you gotta get somebody to help you with a mirror, but usually they're relatively easy. Just wanna make sure you don't drop the keyway. This kind of a silly thing is that they put the keyway on the bottom. So you just wanna be careful with that. But I got it lined up right now, stock timing wise. Now I'm gonna move this ahead because we want a little more jam. So this is where that one was originally, right? So dot to E. I'm gonna go one tooth advanced and keep the pump pulled back. So you see lots of guys, what they do is they'll take the pump and they shove it up against the cylinder head, right? Well, I'm gonna go one tooth advanced on this and we'll keep the pump pulled back. So when we wanna add timing to it, it's already gonna be a couple of degrees higher than it would normally be, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Head towards the pump or towards the head, pump towards the head is gonna give you more timing, away is less. But I always add two degrees in, pull the pump back as far as you can is roughly pretty close to stock, roughly. Um, and then when you wanna add time to it, you don't have to take the front apart, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So um, hopefully that um, gets you, oh, actually something. If you're doing this, adjusting timing or whatever, you're gonna want one of these wrenches. This is actually a snap-on one. You don't have to have a snap-on one, but that's the, the part number for it. And then also something else I do recommend when you're doing this is, um, let's see where I got it hiding here. You don't have it out yet is one of these sockets for taking the lines off if you don't have one of these you don't there again don't have to buy a snap on one buy yourself a set of these uh taking off lines and stuff these things are super handy you don't screw up the lines they're easy to get at you can snug them up easy um, but this one is a 17 for the ve i have a kit of them it's just for some reason i bought this one but it's uh i don't know where the part number is right there you probably won't be able to read the part number though but anyways, get one of these and that's for doing the injection lines up. Like I said, I have a set of them go up. I think they go from 10 to 21 or something. They were like $8,000. They weren't that much money, but snap on ones are expensive. But you can buy cheap ones of these too. Probably see if maybe I can find a link on Amazon for you guys if you're interested. Um, and like I said, with that wrench, you, I'm sure you can probably buy cheap ones of these too. I have snap wall blue point ones um, just because I do do it quite often. And I like the better, a little bit better quality myself personally. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps you guys on some of that stuff. Like I said, stock timing. I always check them before you take them apart, mark them. I actually usually use an engraver when I, when I do it. I just know this one was at E because we looked at it and most of them are at E. So if you want it to run exactly the same way as you did, if you're tearing the engine all apart or whatever, just make, you know, mark it and then you don't have to, you're no wondering. Also too, if you want to mark the pump where it's at. Now, if it's not perfectly lined up with that mark that it was to begin with, um, you know, mark it and then you know exactly where it was. So lots of times that type of stuff goes a long way, you know, two minutes with a, a scribe or whatever, or a little engraving tool, you know, helps a guy out. But hopefully that helps you guys. Um, you know, if there's any, anything else you want me to do, let me know in the description or in the, in the description, in the comments, um, and, uh, do my best to help you out. So, uh, like subscribe, hit me in the comments and, uh, remember it's not rocket science, but if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough.